everyone this is my review of the new SV207 eyepieces from Sivobani this video comes to you from a hot and beautiful South Africa and since it is fairly hot these days my beverage of choice is a lovely golden APA smooth and delicious and for this review of the SV207 eyepieces from Swiboni, I will be using my trusty 8 inch Dobsonian. On paper, SV207 doesn't have much backing it in its corner. For the same dollars, you could get a wide angle, long eye relief, ultra wide angle, 66 or 68 degree red band or gold band eyepieces. And also, if you look at the specs, you'll see that these have the same sort of specs as the SV131, which are more of a budget possible eyepiece, still in my opinion quite a good eyepiece. Fully multi-coated, 50 degree uh, angular field of view, etc. So, why the SV207? Well, as you will know by now, the new SV207 from Spaboni is a plus all eyepiece. Uh, but they call them a super plus all eyepiece, and, uh, which that usually means a wider field of view and these are available from 8, 15, 25 and 30 millimeters. Uh, each eyepiece has an eye relief as expected from a plus hole. Uh, the 8 millimeter only needing 6.8 millimeters eye relief which to me feels like your eyeball is against the eye lens but because of the construction it actually doesn't feel so bad it's quite comfortable to look through. I'm actually happy that Svoboni didn't go shorter than an 8mm because in my opinion an 8mm is about as short as you, as you should go for a plus hole. For, uh, my initial impression of the eyepieces, the metal construction is absolutely beautiful, the satin finish is lovely and the eyepieces are constructed in a way that they're very comfortable to look through. I also found that the eye lenses are a little bit oversized for plus holes. also love these soft rubber eyepiece guards they are very nice the eyepieces also feel very heavy for their size um, but don't worry about the weight the, the heaviest which is the 25 comes in at only about 130 grams so it's not going to weigh down your telescope in fact these will go very well inside something like the portable SV501P 70mm uh, 400 refractor which is a great scope by the way other than the rock solid construction and beautiful sets and finish, uh, you immediately notice excellent optical coatings. These are uh, much higher quality optical coatings than the SV131 and if you ever had, have a chance to compare the two you'll know there is a difference between fully multi-coated and fully multi-coated. So far, so good. I did a few telescope tests with these to compare the SP5 uh, 207s to the SV 131s. Um, I also compared these to the ultra wide, red, um, known as red band eyepieces because those have become a bit of a benchmark to me. They're fairly well known um, in the astron astronomy community and I really like them a lot. And my initial tests, I had a look at the brighter planets, Saturn and Jupiter. And I found that they, there was not much in it between the red band and the SV207. Um, but after quite a lot of testing, I found that the SV207 has slightly better contrast. Sharpness is very similar, but both left the SV131 far behind in its dust. And so what I did is I tried to test the different areas of the field of view. So I took it all the way to the edge. I found that you know, in the ultra wide, you do have 66 degrees, so you don't have much to complain about when you're going further than 50 degrees out. But in the edge of the field, these did come out on top, uh, being quite sharp at the edge of the field. Um, I think any distortion that I saw may have been due to coma in my telescope. I, uh, I found that you could still see the bands of Jupiter and a lot of detail in Saturn's rings as well. With the SV131 plus eyepieces, I found that if you put, if 
you look to the edge of field, you find that the object becomes blurry and elongated. So, you know, a clear winner for the SV207 in that department. I also found, funny enough, that the SV207 is slightly more comfortable to look through than the Ultraride Red Band. Uh, not because of the eye relief, but because of the construction. If you take your eye slightly off center, you find that it's, there's less edge of the field darkening on this SV207, and that was quite a pleasant surprise. The planets are fairly easy targets for eyepieces in this range, so I decided to put a few more difficult objects to the test. I focused on some stars, both the red band and these SV207 were razor sharp on stars. I found that the, the red band had slightly more chromatic aberration. Uh, I didn't notice any chromatic aberration in these, um, in fact. Um, and then I decided to try it on something a little bit more challenging. Uh, and here in the south we have the lovely 47 Tucano, which is quite high up in the evenings. And on that, both the red band and these super plusles show magnificent detail in the globular. Fine sparkles of light, pin pinpoint sharp and lovely. So I had to swap these eyepieces out over and over again and to me I found that the SV207 showed slightly better contrast. Both were about as sharp but I do like the wide field of view in the red band. To me if I was going to buy one or the other it would be a very tough choice. For comparison's sake, I also tested the 25mm Super Plusle versus the Orion Sirius Plusle, which is also a Super Plusle, boasting about 52 degrees field of view. Uh, the Sirius Plusle definitely has that slight little extra field of view. Um, the Sirius Plusle also looks like it has optical coatings which don't give that many reflections, but the SV207, to me, is sharper and has better contrast. Definitely. The edge of the field, the SV207 definitely wins that one. Uh, the the Ryan Sirius is a good eyepiece, don't get me wrong. Um, I would also like to just mention that um, the 32mm Plusl from Smoboni, the old one, the SV131, is a bit of a step up above the standard Plusls, that have, the new standard Plusls that have come out. Um, between the 30mm Super Plusl and the existing 32mm Plusl, the field of view in the Super Plus is definitely a little bit wider, but there is definitely a bit of an image quality improvement in the Super Plus. So, after my comparisons, what does it boil down to? The Super Plus do carry a bit more of a price tag, but having said that, they're still not that expensive, especially compared to other brands. And they offer excellent optical quality and I honestly can highly recommend these art pieces. Thank you for watching. Cheers.